So, join us back for another video. This one being on a tank clutch out of the tank behind me there. That one being the Centurion Battle Tank. Its particular mark being a Mark 13. The reason the clutch is out is we had to pull the gearbox out to do some leaks, which you'd have seen in the previous video. And um, why this out, we're going to go through the clutch, check it, make sure she's all functioning okay, and we've got a sneaking suspicion there's a problem with the release bearing. So here it is on the bench. It makes the bench look quite small. It's blind into the back of the crankshaft on here. So the clutch is, is a Borgenbeck triple plate, 17 inch clutch, weighs a massive 250 kilos, that's a quarter of a ton. So it's not your little car clutch. So our first jobs being is we need to get the release bearing off the gear of the front, then turn it onto its side and start taking it out from the back. So let's make a start. Anyone who's taken one of these parts before knows that we've already cheated and we've started and we've took this snap ring off. That is awful. The guy that designed that, yeah, you hated mechanics and engineers. So, right, Josh, if you pull that off. So that's quite a cool, so that's, that's off the splines that drives in the back of the crankshaft. The clutch drives here and the main sill for the engine runs on this, which means you've got a replaceable service for your main sill without replacing the whole clutch. So yeah, that is our main sill. The main sill is, you've got a sanded lip sill this side, then you've got a felt dust sill from that on that side. And again, that fits on there. So again, that is backwards, but yeah. So now this is our release bearing. If you lift that off, Josh. So as you push the clutch pedal down, you're actually pushing this down, which pushes the fingers, which separates the drive plates. You'll see that once it starts to come to bits. So our release bearing, if it's now stuck in again, has come to bits. It shouldn't do that and it looks like that has worn the bearing surface down. We'll have to wait until we clean it all up to find out what damage is done, but wasn't expecting to see that. So our first job is to get this on its end, which is not so easy. So this, you can see this bolt onto it currently, is the lifting jig, for lifting it off. This makes life easy. I see everyone lifting, it on, lifting them on ratchet straps and stuff. Man, sod that. This is like game That's changer. Right, so if you stop that rolling away.
dab it out of it. We were uh, this now, it's quite heavy. You gotta take the bolts out, it's just on keyholes. So it slides on, and then lifts up, pulls on. As with all these things, you'll see quite often as we reveal and stuff, we have to make sockets and tools for the job. So this started life off as I think that is a proper from scratch one. No, no, this side off is a round piece of steel with the back end of a socket welded to it and then milled into a crescent socket. You know, the front bit's not so good. No. Again, we've got another locking tabs. Then we've got his little locking tab. Then we can take this back drive plate off. So if we get the older uh, relever in from this side. Yeah. Yep. That's the shaft. It does, isn't it? It is the shaft. It does. So first look inside here is that seal is Hallett. That's been nicked when it's been put together. So our next job is we now have to separate the housing. So what we first do is we're going to take off every other bolt and get rid of them. And then we wind half one bolt out one turn at a time and it relieves the pressure of the plates. Right, so, as you see in the camera, we're now separated here. So the next important thing to do, if Josh remembered, is get the top punch. These are balanced and then balanced again as, as a whole assembly. So it's important that you get things back round in the right rotation to where they were. So you do that by just dotting it all. See that? So what you've got is, this is, if we lift this one out now, because when we build that up that's the second one that goes in, third, <laughs> yeah, if we lift this one out, so you, in your, in your normal car, your, you know, your big truck, you've got your, your friction plate. And then you've got like the back of your flywheel. Which holds, which your friction plate drives on. Rather than have your pressure plate here, 
You've then got... Yeah, second intermediate plate, or first if you have your first intermediate plate, which drives on this. On the other side of that is what this then clutch plate drives. Put that on the floor. What I'll do, I will lay it all out on the floor so you can I'll explain what I mean better. So once we got that out, we then have another friction plate. So that's what they mean by triple plate. You've got three. Clutch plates. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to pop all this out of the way so then we can carry on with the front side. Right then, so now we need to move the front pressure, the front pressure plate. And this is the actual pressure plate of the clutch. So we're using the same as we did before. One, As I continue winding these off, you'll see that front pressure plate start to lose its pressure. Stiff on that slider. Yeah. Him there. Oh, the spring stayed in. We're now just looking for cracked or broken springs. They're all full of mud. One of the things you do have to check for is their length to make sure they have the right free length. So here is our clutch, all disassembled, all clean, all painted, ready to go back together. As a reference, that is a coat can on the inner splines of one of the friction plates. So this is our front nose. This is where all the spring pressure is inserted to the pressure plates and all of our springs. So they are all there, all cleaned up, painted the spring buckets. These are our clutch release arms. So you've got the arms, we've got the needle bearings for them, all the pins, and the rattle springs. So we'll show you how they work and build them up once we're ready for them. This is our rear main sill. Um, and the seal that goes in there is now is a is an obsolete size, so we machine this out to take a more modern and better seal. We'll show you that. Our release bearing turned out it was broken, and we'll show you how we repaired that and we'll finish putting that back together. We've got the center shaft, the center shaft, and its its bearings, one there and one there, and how we have to use that to line the clutch back up. So it's not really a thing on a front wheel drive car, but anyone that does lorries or rear wheel drive, you know about lining the clutch up to make sure your input shaft goes through. Well, here we've got to do three plates that aren't held together until it's all bolted together. So we'll show you how we do that. So here we are on the bench. We now got the satisfying job of peeling most of the masking tape off. If I can find the start. Now, I know lots of you commented down on a previous video that you want to see us do all the cleaning and the wire brushing and the painting and stuff. But believe me, you don't. Well, I don't think you do anyway. Like, that is two days worth of cleaning, scrubbing, painting, checking stuff. I, I don't know how to 
edit that down into a video that isn't a day long. You, 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 I'm pretty sure you're not going to want to sit on YouTube for a day watching us clean something. So we'll show you how things work and what goes as we, as we go along. So our next job being is we need to put all of these spring buckets in. Which are like this. They literally just push inside and provide a stop for the spring. Fun little fact for you, them springs provide 1.4 tonnes of pressure on the, uh, the clutch pressure plates, stopping it from slipping. That is 1.4 tonnes. I think that's an impressive number. So let's get the rest of the buckets in, then we need to take a measurement for the springs to make sure they are not too short. There is a minimum free length. Depending on specifications, some specs on some things you're building, there'll be a certain spring pressure. So at compressed to two inches, it, there needs, it needs to take, I don't know, 50 kilos of force, say. Or sometimes there is just a minimum free length. Now that's important, so we've got even pressure the whole way around our pressure plate. So our one is we can't have a free length shorter than 3.8 inches. So we measure that with a vernier. So that one is yeah, 3.828, so she's good, we can fit that. Three point eight four four. yep, she's good. So we'll now go around, we'll measure all these and we'll stick them in, and then we'll bring the next bit to the table. So this is our first pressure plate. Now the back side of him, we have started with all these dimples. And now they locate on our springs, and then these blocks stick out, and that is what bolts through the hole there and to our release forks. So our, what our release fork does is push this and compress the springs, taking pressure off the plate. So pressure plates, there's a few things to look for. And you'll see a couple of these little tiny heat cracks you there now little heat cracks on your pressure plate is completely fine it is just what happens as these get hot um, you know as the clutch slips as you disconnect drive and as you and, and then you re-engage re drive that is just what happens it's part of the how it works so that, that's completely fine what you don't want to see is big cracks going the whole way across the face um, you'll see the heat cracks, they're just little ones, they're you know, normally sort of 10, 15 sort of mil long, jagged the edges, and they don't go anywhere, they're just halfway through, you know, in the middle of the plate. They don't start at the edge and work to the middle. So we can now fit him. Now, we've dotted everything, so we know this is all balanced as one assembly, so we need to know where it goes to go back together to keep it balanced. So we dot everything with a dot punch. So we've got to look for our dots. Um... As we go right, well, here we go. Don't know how well you can see, but right in front of my thumb is a dot. Now that correlates to our housing, which has a dot there. So lining our dots up. I don't have to call on this one, is it? Just the bolts. Just the bolts. <laughs> We'll do it up. So I need to look, remember to look for my dot. Dot's, Josh, gonna put his finger on the dot of the housing. There is it. Yeah. It is. Oh, fuck, just hold on the inside. bit dark around here but just bear with us so yeah they just bolt on this is the bottom one so you're not weird to see that they just bolt on there but you'll see more of these in a bit. 
for start with, we've, start with, we've just got to bolt it up and apply the pre correct spring pressure to this plate here. There's nothing to reset really up, you just bolt it down until the lugs on this plate bolt hard against here. So this is our shaft that our friction plates are driving. So this end is what spines onto the um, flange that goes on the gearbox. And he slides on down there. Now we've got a bearing that goes in here that runs on this surface. The inner, the inner bearing goes here. Now, so here is a bearing with a removable cage. Well, no, removable outer race. Now we don't run the outer race. Instead, bearing runs in the shaft. Cupped by this spacer. And then, Josh holds the camera a minute. Because I've generally got a knack for circlips. That's our bearing fitted with the spacer and the circlip. And he slides on nicely onto the shaft. There is a seal that goes in the end there as well, but as we're going to be fitting the shaft in and out a few times, so we're not going to fit that just yet. We don't want to nick it in the, um, while, while fitting the uh, friction plates. So first friction plate, he goes here. Our first friction plate. He's in. Trying to remember where our dot is. So what I can do now is I can line him up using the centre shaft. So what we're doing is we're fitting a very, we're very small amount of copper slip on the splines. We don't want to grease it or anything, so copper slip is perfect for that. It's just anti-seize. Same again, we've checked this for heat cracks and there's nothing major. And then we've also copper slipped the sliders. So here goes that. So then we pull our shaft back out. So our second friction plate. Again, we now have to line this up. The other one. So now we can pull our shaft back out again. So these pressure plates that go on these sliders in here, we've also dotted them. So we need to make sure they're referenced to our, our dot. So that's the last friction plate fitted. So now we can go for these seals. Now, we need to build this shaft up. My first job being is the seal on the end, and then build up this half. Anyone know what the name of this seal is? It's like an inside out seal. It's this side here you want to go first. There. Keep going. Yeah. Round in line with your arm. 
Keep going around, keep going around. There's some weird little Yeah, it is. Right, bearing. This is the back bearing that supports the flange that bolts to the gearbox. And it's a self-aligning double roll, double, double row ball bearing, which just takes any slight misalignment out. Obviously, it's not going to work with like that. This is for taking a few foul out. Nothing massive. So this is again, this is the one that come out. So this is oiled by the gearbox in once it's once it's in and working. Though that is a long way for the gearbox all to come, so we want to just make sure it's not going to run dry. Go, okay, that is nice lubricated up, and he then goes in this housing here. pressing in. I was going to say, this one we could just press in. Right, to the press. Manually operated today. It is manually operated today. <laughs> right, so, let's go back to the bench where we fit the circlip. So, now we've got the circuit to go in. I'm not looking forward to that one. So you see, it just allows that ever so slightly misalignment. You tell it's not a lot, because if not, it'll hit the circle. The balls hit the circle. So now we need to fit this to. to go more yet but what I'd be able to do with these I'll give it a damn good go right oh look at that muscles So now we then fit this assembly to here with a bit of gasket sealer. Probably enough to then draw on. 
There might actually be as much as we get until we compress it all down anyway. Yes. So, our next job being to fit the back plate that's all in the camera shot. Yes. Now our Doc Josh is there. Yeah. But I can't reference to absolutely anything else, you have to grab hold of this side. It is in the right place. Okay. Pulling my fingers out. So now Josh is going to cut us with some bolts up. So if you can see in the camera, can we have a big gap here? Now obviously we tighten the retention in front springs up, but now we need to now we need to put that pressure onto all of the blades. So, right, Josh is going to go around, do them up, I'm going to leave this one, so then you can see how much weight extra is getting pushed onto the springs. So yeah, you can you see I can, I can get my finger underneath the head of that bolt now. Yep. So, and all that extra, well, preload on the springs at the front has pushed the whole lot in. Uh, so our next job being to uh, bolt him down, then we're gonna turn him up the other way. But that is now this way up. We're nearly dead, but the clutch is good. So our next job now is the release fingers and release mechanism that pulls these up even further to disconnect clutch drive. So let's gather the new bits. Well, gather our bits. My first job is to grease up these needle bearings. And they run around. And that is the bearing for our release fork, release arm. Can you see them? Yeah, you're kind of over to one side, I'm over to the other. So yeah, I've got 17 of these to clean and grease and I'll copper slip them. There's not going to copper slip the pin that time. <laughs> just, just keep relying on them at the corner of my eye. Yeah. Balance it like that for you. There we go. My fingers were caliper pins, they would not seize. So there are two blocks, blocks. There's what bolts it to the clutch itself. I oh, know. I think I the right one the first time. I did. And I'll wash it. 
and then and the not, clips for these are like sir clips but not quite they're like mild, they're mild steel they're soft as hell and we did used to think look at these and think what the hell are these what's the point of them but it turns out they just nip them back up again well, i'd never seen them before till then that was the last clutch we did yeah so that's now ready to be be uh, fitted on yeah let's get all the engine on the gearbox <laughs> no we're gonna fit it to the clutch the clutch it's been a long day let's fit our nicely rebuilt release mechanism See where we're painting it, you know. We we gotta make sure you mask all of the all the surfaces that are metal metal. Right, I'll give you that. So the job of this spring is it's an anti-rattle spring and it just stops the release levers. Rattling. I'm going to put that way probably. No, that way. Because then they'll be doing the same as you go round. Yep. Yep. Not the other two. Go one first. Yep. <laughs> in fact, you can't get them in. You want them? These are just a bit of a faff to fit. I think you've pushed the spacer too far down now. Oh, there we go. And with that fed, the they can't rattle. Can't bounce up. Right, we'll fit the other two and then we shall join you back with the release bearing. Our release bearing, as I said, when we pulled it apart, that something wasn't right. I don't know if you can see, but there's a change in colour here. So that outer is a sleeve. Martin, who volunteers here on last Tuesday, he turned, he stuck up the lay for us. He's turned it down, and uh, we've made a machine. We then machined the sleeve up, pressed that on, which has now took us back to the uh, the correct size. So it's now a nice tight fit in the bearing again. Why it did that, I'm not entirely sure. The bearing seemed okay. The sleeve was made to be a press fit. And then we lock tied that on with a bit of Loctite 648, which is a permanent retaining compound for cylindrical parts. We warmed the sleeve up and um, stuck the original housing in the freezer to help fit it on. With a new bearing, which we'll use some low grade bearing retainer on, we'll press it all together and job should be a good one. Set on the press, a little bit of bearing retainer there on the end, that'll push that down. We need another hand for this, hang on a second. That has now started in there, so that. stick in there, do up the nut there, and we can start pushing that on there. So that gives us on to our next job. And now we have to shim up the release um, forks. So 
if they're not quite right, obviously, as you push release bearing down, you're going to be separating one half of the clutch or one finger for the rest. So it's quite important, and they have to be shimmed within two foul of each other. Now you shim underneath the plates that I show you. Now those are five to one. So if you put if you put one foul underneath the um, plate, the release arm goes down five foul. So Josh is now going around with a feeler gauge, and what we need to know is the gap between the release fork and the release bearing. I've measured all these gaps now. These two actually touch in, which makes it a bit easy. Um, this one, there's a gap under here of about uh, 46 foul, and this one is 68. Um, I've only gone to the nearest even number because obviously I can't do a half foul shim. Um, in fact, these are actually the ones that it had. So I'm gonna try and use them if I can. If it needs new ones though, I'll just have to cut new ones out. And with the power of notes on my phone, See, I've written down the gaps, and then you can see, um, so we shim to the biggest one. So the 68, he'll stay the same. Um, the difference between the 46 and 68 is um, 22. If I add that by five, it's 4.4, .4, so I'm gonna put a four foul shim in. And then the 68 divided by five was 13 point something or other. I've rounded them down to 13. So I'm gonna measure all of these up now stick them in here, here and under there and then hopefully that brings the whole thing slightly further down and I can then check it all, see if I'm in the right place and yeah, hopefully that's all done. It, so it gets a little awkward trying to measure these big gaps because uh, you say that's, as far as I could tell, 68 foul. And um, my biggest, biggest plate on my feeler gauge I don't know if you'll be able to read that at all. Um, it says 32. When you're having to stack three of these together, it does get a bit awkward. So hopefully that gets me in the right place, but I am expecting to have to shin it a second time. So yeah, I'll um, crack on with that. I thought I'd show you this one. So I've pulled the bolt out of this block and now I've got to just kind of get the couple of shims I want to put in and just wiggle them in. Like that, it's a little awkward to do this one handed, I must admit. And then kind of. Oh. No, nope, I've managed to knock that block out. I'm going to need both hands to do this. Josh is now finished shimming up the clutch. Um, me and other Josh were having a tidy up in the workshop because we are now about to start repairing the Antar engine, which is kind of cool. So. What he's done is, just to trim his shims off, but you can see we left them out so you can see where they go. We've got a shim in there. He's already done that one, but. So that is all down, and all these fingers now are within two foul of each other. This one having no shims, so, we, so we've got maximum clutch disconnect, and the rest, of the, shim, the rest of the levers are shimmed up to match, so you get a nice even. Um, release of pressure on your pressure plate. So that is clutch done. So the next video on this is going to be refitting the uh, clutch and shimming and lining all the gearbox up, which is a faff. I wouldn't wish shimming a scent gearbox on my worst enemy. Well, we do have a bit of a knack for it now. If you do like it, you like what you see, hit the old thumbs up. That does help us out. Hit the subscribe button so you stay tuned to what's coming next. Very soon, we're gonna have a video on repairing the anti block. Let's start that, getting that going again. Yes, see you in the next one.